Here's a new short and cute animation called Banana Cat. The song is catchy, so be careful. I've linked it below so you can watch it. The creation of this animation is pretty straightforward. Brienne Druhard invented the character in 2005, and somehow it ended up being the focus of this video more than 10 years later. Perry Grip did the song, and then Brienne created an animatic for the video. An animatic is basically a rough animation since there's a lot more movement than a storyboard, which tends to be still images. The final Banana Cat animation is by Small Boo Studio, and I know I'm pronouncing the last name right because the logo's a ghost. Haha, <laughs> I'm so smart. After the final animation is finished, Perry Grip did a final version of the song, combine the two, upload to the internet, done. The animation style is simple. Textured brown lines with solid fill colors and no shading. There are occasionally smooth lines, like on this mountain and this text here. Changing the style of the line art is as easy as picking a new brush or pencil in Toon Boom, so I'm guessing that's the program for the final animation. The animatic is Toon Boom. Banana Cat is a good chance to see what changes between an animatic and a final animation, especially in a case where the artists doing the final animation are different than the ones doing the rough cut animatic. While the general sense of timing and what is happening on screen are the same, Small Boo added a lot more personality to Banana Cat's movements. For example, the running animation at the beginning, not only is Banana Cat more floppy and bouncy in general, we get this squishy roll leading into the run. That's personality stuff. When Banana Cat pushes the old Banana Cat into the volcano, in the animatic that's it. But in the final version, the animators added a semi-crazed stare at the audience afterwards. This is actually a pretty clever way to make something happen on screen, because without that, Banana Cat is sitting still for too long looking at nothing. Oh, and they also added flies buzzing around brown banana. There are lots of little additions like that. The sorts of things you'll get depend on who's doing the final animation and whether they feel like the cartoon needs more cute, more silliness, more weird, more creepy, whatever. One thing to pay attention to as far as the animatic goes is that when a scene is really important, the person doing the rough animation draws a lot of key poses. The run cycle isn't flushed out at all, but the parts at the end with the approaching cat and the merge into the milkshake, those scenes are very detailed. Especially this part here, this is more like an animator drawing keyframes, so a different animator can come in and draw the pictures in between to bring the thing to life. Because of that, when you compare these scenes between the animatic and the final, there really isn't much change in the movement. Small Boo added a little bounce to the left on the approach, but other than that, the final animation follows the script closely. So, when one animator is giving another an animatic to work off of, it's the rough draft animator's job to make sure that the most important scenes are very clear. Yet it's also important to leave room for the final animator to make improvements. You don't want to tie everything down really hard. And for the final animators, they need to follow the script, but they also need to recognize where things can be improved. And that's it. That's a little bit of insight on how different animators work together to create a final animation.